Hello, I'm going to be showing you how to dynamically add a paging volume to your ZVM system. This process is laid out in CP Plane Admin, Chapter 23, Allocating DASD Space, Section Adding DASD Space to a Running System. I will not be going over how to determine the amount of paging space a ZVM system should have. If you do need that information, it's located also in Chapter 23 of CP Planning and Admin, Section Paging Space. So my system runs on 3390 disks, or ECKDs, so the paging volume I'll be adding is an ECKD. If you have a SCSI-based ZVM system, however, you would use an EDEV instead. A disclaimer, the system I'll be using is for demonstration purposes only, and may or may not follow best practices. Production systems will vary. So we need to log on to a user with priv classes A, B, and D. So I'll log on to my user admin. So first, let's see how much paging space we have. You see that with cp query alloc page. And we see I don't have any. That's not good. Uh, if we do a cp query store, we see I have only one gig of storage. So in ECKD mod 3, or 3,339 cylinders, will be more than enough. Uh, the first thing we need to do is CB format our volume and allocate its cylinders as page. And we do that with the CPFM TXA utility, which lives on PMAINT's 551 disk. So let's issue VM link, PMAINT 551. So you get a hold of that. And then we need to attach the volume, our future page volume, to ourselves. So I'll issue CP attach 1 alpha fox 8, which is the RDEV of the ECKD. And now we can issue CPFM TXA. Format the VDEV of our volume. And the cylinder range, we want to format the entire thing, so we'll issue 0 to end. And now we choose the volume ID. This must be unique and should be easily identifiable. So I'll go with K5 PAG1, which associates it with my system and the fact it's a page back. And we enter yes to begin formatting. And this will take about 30 seconds. Okay, so now we need to define the allocation map. Every CP format of volume has an allocation map, which tells CP how to use the cylinders when this volume is CP owned and attached to system. It's good practice to keep cylinder zero as perm because that's where the allocation map resides, but the rest is good to use. So we'll issue perm zero and page one to end to use the rest of the pack as page space. And then we issue end to signal that we're finished with the allocation map. And here we can verify that the allocation map looks the way we want it, and it does. Um, so we actually need to issue CPFMTXA one more time. Uh, because we need to define the SSI owner. If your system is in an SSI, uh, which mine is, all page, T-disk, and spool packs need to have the SSI owner defined, which tells CP which member within the SSI really owns the pack. So we'll issue CPFMTXA again. Owner. Our packs VDEV and the volume ID, so it knows it's grabbing the right one. And the name of the SSI, which you can get from the CP query SSI command. Mine is K5 SSI. 
and the name of our system, which is GDL VM K5. So our next step is to assign our volume a CP slot number. CP slots range from 1 to 255. To see which slots are available, you use the CP query CP own command. And I will be issuing this in a pipe to reduce the output. So I'm using a pipe to isolate the slots in use. You get the same information with a lot less redundant output this way. So you should follow the slot assignment convention already established on your system. But as you can see, this demo system does not have much on it. So I will arbitrarily use slot 255. And to dynamically do this, we issue CP defined CP own slot, the slot number, I used to 55, and then the volume ID of our page pack. And notice we use the volumes volume ID and not the RDEV. And then we need to attach it to system, but first we need to unattach it to us, uh, from ourselves. And now, if we do a CP query alloc page, we see that we have our page pack. So in order for this page pack to survive a re-IPL, it also needs to be defined in the system config. So let's link pmates charlie fox zero, where the system config lives, access it, and let's bring it up. And this is what it should look like. As you can see, I've already made the change. If your system is not part of an SSI, you won't have these begin and end statements. And that's it, we're done. Uh, this process is the same for T-Disk and spool packs as well. Thanks for watching.